I would say his main innovation is the reframing of the Buddhist uh, perspective called anicca or impermanence in terms of expansion and contraction. In early Buddhism, uh, they talked about a stage in one's practice where after paying very close attention to sensory phenomena, one's awareness becomes dominated by uh, the perception of sensory events rising and passing. The word uh, the, in Pali is udaya bhaya. Udaya means coming up and vyaya means passing away. You combine them together and you have the word udaya bhaya. So there comes a time in one's uh, practice where the sensory clarity is so great that uh, you're aware of the risings and passings of uh, sensory events, and that dominates your awareness. A stage after that is an awareness not of sequential rising and passing, but an awareness that no sooner does something arise, but it's already passing. Uh, this is described quite uh, clearly in the classic text on mindfulness practice called the Visuddhimagga. The Visuddhimagga was written probably in the 5th or 6th century AD in Sri Lanka by a man named Gosa. So in it, he talks about this stage where no sooner is there the arising, but there's the passing. Now, I'm sure that Sasaki Roshi never read the Visuddhimagga, but he's done decades and decades and decades of practice. He's 102 now. He began his practice when he was 14 years old. And what a practice. Japanese Rinzai Zen, heavy-duty samurai boot camp, monastic training uh, from the age of 14. So the good news is he really, really, really has uh, deep experience. The other news is um, it's hard to understand what he's saying because it's just so profound and, uh, um, and advanced. I sincerely doubt that he ever read the Visuddhimagga, but he has had all the experiences described there and has formulated them, though, in a somewhat different way. He talks about simultaneous expansion and contraction, which is the same thing that, the, that Buddha Gosa talks about when he says, no sooner is something rising, but it's also passing away. Uh, so it's right there in the ancient uh, literature. However, if you formulate it as it is done in the Pali, uh, in terms of rising and passing, then there is the danger that there's going to be a meditator over here observing the rising and passing over there. And in fact, that would be a common criticism that Zen people might make of uh, mindfulness practice. Well, the expansion contraction formulation uh, solves that problem because now instead of its, its rising and passing at the same time, you have the notion of uh, w which allows for a two-dimensional thing over here that I'm observing back here. Expansion and contraction is three-dimensional. It's all-encompassing. When something arises, it arises in three dimensions, and that includes the observer as part of the arising. The observer is rising, is expanding into existence and contracting out of existence simultaneously, as opposed to a two-dimensional thing that you observe. It's now a three-dimensional thing that you participate in. So I would say the main innovation of Sasaki Roshi is formulating impermanence in terms of expansion and contraction. And the notion that if you 
simultaneously totally give yourself to the expansion and contraction, you become the expansion and contraction, and then there's nothing but expansion and contraction, and at some point, they cancel each other out into a flat line of zero, which is the uh, unborn, the primordial state of the source. Then there is an abiding in zero until it repolarizes. When it polarizes, once again, in between, literally in between the forces of affirmation and negation, the forces of life and death, in between, are born the feel, image, talk, perceiver, and the touch, sight, sound, world. Both of them are born simultaneously in the cleft that surrounds self and world. This gives a, uh, a model for how consciousness works, and it, it allows for an experience where um, you participate in expansion, you simultaneously expand and contract, you and your world simultaneously are born in between the clefts of life and death, and then life and death cancel out into zero, and you go back to zero, and then you and your world come out of zero again, born in the cleft in between expansion and contraction, and then that cleft collapses back into zero. And this is the cycle of impermanence, which Sasaki also calls the activity of the Dharma, or the activity of um, uh, consciousness, uh, and so forth. So I would say his main innovation is this three-dimensional paradigm that vastly broadens and generalizes the uh, early Buddhist notion of impermanence and actually gives, um, in a sense, a mathematical formulation for what's going on in consciousness. As far as the main difference between his teaching and mine, he has you experience this through koan practice. What I've done is I've taken his model and I have mounted it within the noting practice of uh, Burmese uh, vipassana. To me, that makes it more systematic and available to a larger audience. So instead of the sort of intuitive but very energetic Zen koan approach, I take a more prosaic, um, algorithmic noting technique that I got from Burma and uh, divide, the, uh, divide into a whole uh, sequence of steps, starting with just focusing on ordinary experience and then breaking it up finer and finer until by small manageable steps of noting certain phenomena, I can bring the average person to actually experiencing this very advanced paradigm of expansion and contraction. So I would say that in some ways um, I'm very much part of the modern world in that in the modern world we have cuisines and um, music forms that are called fusion uh, where you take two uh, traditions and you fuse them in a way that's harmonious. So what I've done is I've fused um, the most creative of the contemporary Japanese Zen masters with um, a Burmese form of uh, uh, a, uh, attentional skill training, and sort of so it's a sort of um, a Burmo Japanese fusion um, uh, uh, that was created by a, a Jewish science geek. <laughs>